Dear colleagues, I am Media Lacry. I'm a French urologist and I work in the University Hospital of Rennes. I'm pleased to show you my work, Transcorporal versus Bulbar Artificial Urinary Sphincter Implantation in Male Patients with Fragile Urethra. I have nothing to disclose and my work has been self-funded. As you know, AUS is the gold standard treatment for stress male urinary incontinence. The surgery has been developed about 50 years ago. The technique has been first described with a bulbar cough placement. Its main complication is cough erosion. According to the existing literature, the main risk factors of urethra AUS erosion would be a history of radiotherapy, urethra surgery, or experimentation of a previous AUS. Those are the patients that we define as fragile urethra. Transcorporal approach has been described by Webster 20 years ago to minimize the risk of urethral erosion. However, literature about this subject is pretty scarce and there is no strong evidence of its efficacy. Moreover, there is no guidelines about its use. The aims of our study were to compare transcorporal versus bulbar AUS implantation in male with fragile urethra and to investigate the risk factors of AUS implantation in this patient population. This was a retrospective study. We included patients who underwent an AUS implantation in 16 French centers between 2004 and 2020. Patients were included if they had a fragile urethra. It was defined as a history of urethral surgery or history of radiotherapy or history of a previous AUS experimentation. Patients were excluded if they had a neurogenic stress urinary incontinence or a peripostatic calf placement. Patients were divided in two groups according to their surgical technique, transcorporal calf placement or bulbar calf placement. The primary endpoint was experimentation free survival, and secondary endpoints were re operation free survival, post operative complications, social, social continence at three months, and social continence at the end of follow up. 1,363 patients were in our database. We included 463 patients who had a fragile urethra. There were 376 patients in the bulbar cuff placement groups and 88 patients in the transcorporal, transcorporal cuff placement group. As you can see on this graph, experimentation free survival was similar in both groups. Reoperation free survival was also similar in both groups. This table shows perioperative outcomes. Postoperative complications and social continence were similar in both groups. Mean length of hospital stay was significantly longer in the transcorporal group. In the multivariate Cox regression analysis adjusting for age cuff size, history of pelvic radiotherapy, and history of previous AUS experimentation, Transcorporal AUS implantation was not associated with experimentation free survival. The only risk factor of shorter experimentation free survival was the history of previous AUS experimentation. In the subgroup of patients with a history of previous AUS experimentation, patients of the transcorporal group tended to have a longer experimentation free survival. In our study, transcorporal AUS implantation was not associated with longer experimentation free nor re operation free survival in male patients with fragile urethra as compared to bulbar implantation. Transcorporal and bulbar AUS implantation brought similar functional and perioperative outcomes. History of previous AUS implantation was the only risk factor associated with shorter experimentation free survival in the transcorporal group. In the light of our findings, and given that transcorporal implantation after failure of a bulbar AUS has been proven feasible but not the opposite, transcorporal AUS might be regarded solely as a backup plan when bulbar dissection appears technically impossible intraoperatively. Further studies are needed.
needed to elucidate the exact benefits of transcorporal approach for each subgroup of patients with fragile urethras. Thank you for your attention.